you were in that community and now, now you're maybe, you know, you were 26 at the time and you could have made a, you know, a move to move out of the community when some things happened there. Can you give us a little background there? Yeah, the school, the school was established uh, in 1868 and 1972 because of uh, the strife in, uh, in the city of Newark and around the country, the school closed. And uh, uh, it, it never was really clear to the public, I think, why it closed. It closed, in my opinion, because of race. And uh, as the school became more and more uh, young men of color, uh, it became more and more of a problem, it seemed, for, for a lot of people. So at any rate, we, we got together, a small group of us, and uh, started something with 89 students. And uh, there's 560 now, and I'm sitting here talking to you. Wow. <laughs> did you ever go to that school yourself? I did. I was a student there myself. And uh, uh, all, of, all of what's happened there is, is clear testimony to God's, God's love and God's grace because there's no way you can explain it. It makes no business sense uh, with the amount of money that we have to raise. Most of the kids that come to the school can't pay to be there. So it's, uh, every day for me is, uh, is a testimony of God's love uh, for us. And that um, somebody once said that God will work uh, – with you, but not for you. So, uh, <laughs> if you're willing to to, uh, to to take faith and put it into action, and God can do the rest, and I think it's testimony to it. You are very modest because when I watched the report, you know, at, at 26, you could have been doing a lot of different things, but you decided to basically, you know, give your life to help these people that uh, may not have a chance. Yeah, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. That's why I could I could do it. I had no, <laughs> I, I had no back. <laughs> I had no background in education at all. I just was uh, on fire with the fact that that something needed to be done in uh, in the city, and God did the rest. I mean, we, I, I, I had no idea. So it was helpful that I was only 26. Had I been 36 or 46, I might have said, oh, there's too many problems, too many challenges, I wouldn't have done it. That's interesting, that's interesting to think about that. The passion is what car carried you through. Mm -hmm. yep. AJ, you attended St. Benedict's. Tell us a little bit, uh, give some people some background that don't know much about it, and you know, there's there's a lot more to it than we're, we're getting to there's, right now. There is a lot more to it. 520 Martin Luther King Boulevard, uh, North New Jersey, best place on earth. Yes. Um, I was, I, I came into St. Benedict's my sophomore year. Uh, Reverend Watley was a friend of Father Ed, and that's how I ended up there. I was, uh, I guess, you want to say troublesome child, Father Ed? <laughs> that's what he said. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm a child. I'm a fun child. I was active. I was active. I was fiery. I, knew, I, went to, I, was, I mean, I discovered New York young. I used to take the train to New York all the time, so I was back and forth. Um, you know, I was just, a, I was a fiery kid. And St. Benedict's was, and at the time, my parents had just had a divorce. My father had just moved to Atlanta, and I didn't have a male role model in the house. And Father Ed and Mr. Green, who was the yes. dean of discipline at the time, um, <laughs> they took over where my, <laughs> where my dad wasn't physically there, but he was, you know, my dad has always been a president in my life, but um, Father Ed was, was my, my second father. Um, and just the, the experience of being at this school the, 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 the values they give you, the stuff that you learn, whatever hurts my brother hurts me. Um, you know, there's an honor system where there are no locks on the lockers. Uh, at the time, everybody had to wear Chuck Taylors because, you know, everybody was, they, you know, they were stealing Jordans and stuff. There were just certain things that you learned uh, at St. Benedict's that, that transformed me and changed me and be, become the man that I am today. Uh, I wouldn't have gotten through so many rough times if it wasn't. I mean, he, can, he, he might even tell the stories. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Father Ed I'm going to get today. There's, there's different Father Ed's you can get on it. So, I, I mean, I've, I've been at Father Ed's window at 4 o'clock in the morning yelling, like, I need to talk to you. Come downstairs. When I, when I came down to meet you at the arena in Newark, he had stopped uh, by the school and I was in my room in the monastery and I heard this voice, the voice that I used to have here at three and four in the morning. Years ago, I heard this voice that said, tell Ed to call me and I heard the voice cringed because ah, it's AJ. <laughs> right? So he was the one that dragged me down to, uh, to meet you that night. So uh, yeah, he was a little troublesome. And it was really serendipitous because the son of the pastor who got me into the school was with me as well. Matthew Watley is the son of Reverend Watley, and he was there as well at the Night of Hope. So it was kind of full circle to be there with Reverend Watley's son, Father Ed, and, and introduce you two because, um, you know, Benedict's is such a special place, and they, they tirelessly each year try to raise money to, to support the, the students that are there. And I just, I just felt that it was serendipitous. If you're going to be in Newark, 
And you're a man of God. You got to meet Father Red because yeah. he is God in North. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's, awesome. That's not true. Wow. That's, That's so awesome. good. You know, um, one of the connections that I see, uh, Joel, in regard to the St. Benedict's and, you know, 